Welcome back all my beautiful friends. My name is Greta and I review perfume and other luxury items. If that's something that appeals to you, please consider hitting the subscribe button along with the notification bell. So let's get into this one because I have a lot I want to cover and I don't want this to be too long. So today's video is just fun for me because I'm so in love with this fragrance profile that I wanted to highlight some of my favorite perfumes. So this is my favorite Rose Oud fragrances. A lot of them have vanilla too, but it, not necessarily. So it's my favorite Rose Oud. Um, so there is a little bit of common denominator in these fragrances, but they're all go a little bit of a different direction. So let's get to the 11. Let's see here. Oh, perfect. The first one is a bottle that I have been waiting for and waiting for, and I, I do have the sample and I'm in love with it. And I've had it in my cart for months and trying to use a Neiman Marcus gift card from one of their like, spend this much, get a gift card. So I finally did purchase it by having to wait for normal hours and call customer service to help me place so this So this is the Armani Privé, y'all know it, Rose Derby, which I've had this sample for so long and never really wore it. And then I just, wow. I wore it a few times and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm mad in love with this. I need to have it. I had the gift card. It just made sense. So I got it. This one is from 2010. It's been around a while. It's Damascus Rose with patchouli, vanilla, and Arab woods or agarwood or oud. So oud. A dupe for this, I heard, have not tried myself, but I did hear Swiss Arabian has a dupe for it called Zaa al Sheila. Zaa al Sheila. I'll put it up on the screen so you know how it how it's spelled. I really like this one. A very indulgent rose. I do hate how they do these like dabber kind of things. Oh, I just got it on my nose. This is such a beautiful, beautiful jammy rose oud. Okay, I'm gonna move on because it's a long list. Then I have, okay, this is perfect. From the JTC collection at Zerjoff, More Than Words, which as I've said before, the JTC collection, the notes are vaulted. There will list some things at Fragrantica that may or may not be accurate. Um, sometimes they're in there, but they're not the prominent notes or it's just much more complex. So you, you kind of have to take for granted to go with a grain of salt with this one. I have seen this compared a lot to Oud Bouquet by Lancome. So I will tell you, I actually paid attention to that and I made notes somewhere. This is a much brighter version than Oud Bouquet. It's much brighter. It's definitely got the sillage and the longevity like Oud Bouquet, but it's also cleaner. So it's brighter and cleaner where Oud Bouquet is like a dirtier rose oud. There's just something dirty. If you compare them side by side, you can really see it where this is just a brighter, fruitier, more refreshing version. And it just goes on and on. It's amazing. And again, I had the samples for this. I didn't blind buy. I'll tell you if I blind bought anything in here, but so far it's all been sample first. I'm getting much better at that. More Than Words is from 2012. It's by Chris Maurice, who has done most of the Zerjoff fragrances. And it is agarwood. And again, you'll see it's very loose. It's not in a pyramid. It's just things people pulled out, which is agarwood or oud, fruity notes, floral notes, primarily roses, oriental notes, ambergris, woody notes, labdanum, giving a little bit of texture to the petals, alabanum, and it is just a brighter, fruitier oud. Uh, oud bouquet is also more syrupy, syrupy and dirtier than this. I wrote these notes. It's a little closer to the Armani Privé in comparison. So like if you like Rose's Derby, this is closer to that. I don't I mean, if you get a better deal on one or the other or whatever, if you want both there, there's, there's a little bit of common denominator here in some of these. You might not need all of them like I have. I'm a little, you know, you know, I really like this one. I need to wear this one a little more. 
Okay, but I did just receive this, so I haven't had a chance to spray from the bottle. I've been using uh, the decants, uh, the samples from Zurjoff that I have. Okay, so the next one, just makes sense, is Oud Bouquet. So this one again is a jammier, more syrupy rose, and it's a little dirtier. Does it's a beast and it does last forever. This one is from 2014 and it's Oud, Praline, Vanilla, Rose, and Saffron. Um, and you know, to back up, I would say there might be vanilla in the More Than Words too, even though it's, again, not listed in Fragrantica, but it just kind of makes sense to be in there. And the Oud Bouquet, yes, this is that, it has that praline in there, which gives it that really jammy, sweet, kind of fragrance. And that's probably what gives it that dirtiness too, is the praline, just dirtying it up a little bit, whereas that's more of a bright, fruity floral. Oud, rose. Okay. I think most people know this one. It's kind of become icon. And let's see here. And then we have, oh, okay. This one, I need to do a huge shout out because, um, Notes Punch, if you don't know Ehab, he has a channel. I will put his channel up here. He's phenomenal. If you don't know him and you don't watch him, he's so entertaining. He has this incredible energy about him, this just positive energy. It's always hyper. He used to always have a lot of cool music. It's just like beat that had you going. Uh, he's got an incredible collection. He's got incredible taste. Um, if I had to um, size up like what his taste is, he does have a traditional classic masculine taste, but just like me, there's a lot of fragrances that are unisex. So I like getting other perspectives to kind of get a feel for certain fragrances. So a lot of the guys on my channel especially are gonna love it, but he's a great collection. So he had ordered the wrong Cruz del Sur by accident. So I offered to send him one and he just said, you know what, can I send you something from my collection? And I asked for Vorticina by Zerjoff, which comes in the beautiful red velvet bottle and fell in love with this. I, I, this is in my cart now to buy. This is a beautiful powdery rose. And then also Life of Fragrances, Kelly, love you. Mwah. She's another one that I kind of bounced this off of and she agreed it's like a powdery rose. She loves it. Um, incredible sillage, according to Kelly. I have not worn this in front of other people but she said she left a bewitching trail all through her work building. So there's that for you. Thank you, Kelly, for giving me that intel. So, and thank you, Ehab, for sending this to me. You're amazing. And um, go check out his channel because he's a lot of fun. He's a lot of fun. He's a little crazy, but like good crazy, you know, like crazy fun. He's crazy fun. So thank you, Ehab. This one, let me tell you about it. So this one is from 2019. It's fairly new. It is in the Velvet Collection, the Red Velvet Bottle of Zerjoff. And this is the perfumer, Chris Maurice. Top notes are green notes. Middle notes are Bulgarian rose, saffron, cedar, and patchouli. And the base is, check this out, tobacco, musk, and vanilla. But it's, I don't get a whole lot of tobacco. Like, tobacco is another funny note like leather that I don't like too much tobacco. It has to be a clean tobacco on me. It can't be like an ashtray or like a burned tobacco. They, it will overpower everything on my skin. But this is, um, it's definitely a quieter rose where like a powdery rose. I've been wearing this and it leaves that trail and I asked my mother when I, I sprayed this on me before earlier this morning and I asked my mother like, Hey, try this perfume. She goes, I smelled like an hour ago, this amazing scent. I go, Oh, that's this arm. Try this. She's like, yes, that is so good. It left this incredible trail around the house. So yes, I guess it does leave a trail around the house, but I, I, I now I want to get this and it, you can get it pretty reasonable. It's good. It is, um, a sweet rose. I don't really get those green notes personally. I'm not a big green note person, but um, I do get vanilla. The vanilla and the rose, and I don't know where the powderiness comes from. However, that is a little bit of that Zerjoff um, DNA is that just addictive kind of base that they have. 
I don't get too much of a sharp saffron either or that tobacco, so don't worry about that. But it is a drier fragrance. In this realm here, this is probably the driest of the ones I've mentioned so far, meaning least sweet. But it's still sweet because you know I don't like dark foods. So, more to see them. The next one is on its way via sea turtle. I've been waiting a long time is by Atelier des Ors. And of course it's the beautiful bottle with like the pieces of gold in there floating around that I wish I could have had for this video. But again, I just wanted to do it. I'm behind enough right now. So, um, and this is the Rose Omoyada. I had gotten a bunch of samples from Scent Splits and this was one of them. I got all these Atelier des Ors from there. And I just absolutely loved this one. So let me tell you about this one. It's from 2015 and the nose is Marie Salamagne. Salamagne, I think is how she says it. Top notes are rose, raspberry, pink pepper. I mean, oh, you still my beating heart. Middle notes are brown sugar, patchouli, and guyac wood. In a base of agarwood oud, amber, and sandalwood. Again. It is this beautiful, decadent, jammy rose oud that lasts and lasts and projects and you will smell this on you all day long, which I love. And I, I get it when it, it gets too hot. I mean, I don't understand, like these fragrances are, are huge in the Arab world with that this very hot desert out there and they seem to wear these all year round. So I don't know. We'll see what I can do this summer, but some of these, you you know, I don't know. I think I'm the one that feels stifled sometimes, but I've just been craving this. I've really been craving these fragrances and people don't know, but in Southern California, we have a really long spring. It's like rainy season in the beginning of the year. And then we go into May gray and June gloom. So we get two months of a lot of overcast. Yes, it's warm out like in the sixties, maybe 70 but it's overcast. It's just not sunny days. And then the sun will come out and then just a lot of overcast. No rain or anything, just cloud cover. So you kind of get in the mood for this kind of stuff. And I think that's probably why I've been craving this is and just because I've discovered so many amazing ones. So forgive me if you're like sweltering in the heat right now and this doesn't work for you, but I just craving, craving it. Okay, the next one is also a recent, recent purchase, which is Zerjoff's Soprano. I mentioned this a little bit in the haul. And this one's from 2019. It's fairly new. I'm assuming Chris Maurice on this one, but I'm not sure. Occasionally there's a different nose at Zerjoff. And the top notes are fruits, lychee, freesia, calibrium bergamot, giving it a beautiful, vibrant, fruity opening followed by middle notes of Bulgarian rose, osmanthus, milk, Egyptian jasmine, where you get that creaminess from the milk, that lactonic kind of feel, along with the, the vibrancy from, you have the lychee and the osmanthus, which give that like sweet tart kind of feel to it. And then you've got that bewitching jasmine, which is never subtle. And then a base of Agarwood, oud, patchouli, and leather. And leather in here kind of dances in and out. It's not an overwhelming leather. It kind of plays peekaboo with you a little bit, but you have that beautiful Zerjoff DNA as well that is very creamy. Um, just there's something intoxicating about that Zerjoff DNA. But I love this one because you have those very different notes in there. So you get like this dance all day long of these like sweet and sour and then the patchouli in the wood and you just you know the oud and you just kind of like dance all over the place with this one this one's really fun and i have worn this one in the heat and because it kind of dances around it's never really overwhelming on me plus that purple velvet's amazing okay the next one is an only goodie classic is but you kind of forget that it's a rose oud is delina exclusive P people like they they think of their original delina and they forget that this is one that is a heavier version and has oud in it so this one is 2018 they came out with it uh it's quentin biche is the perfumer and i may be mispronouncing that forgive me 
The top notes are lychee, pear, and bergamot. So you have lychee and pear, which is sweeter, so it's not as tart as the opening on the original. And then you have middle notes are Turkish rose, agarwood oud, and incense in a base of vanilla, amber, and woody notes. And this one takes on that like rose and powdered sugar kind of feel to it with those free notes. It's kind of how that end result is. And there's just something very addictive. I cannot stop smelling myself with this one. And it does leave a beautiful trail. This is really girly, beautiful Next trail. One. This is another hidden gem. People don't know about this one. It's like, I feel like another secret of mine. So it's another Louis Vuitton fragrance and I have the mini decanted, so I don't have the full bottle, sorry. But it is Matière Noire, which means black matter is how it translates. This one, I get compliments on this one. Wow. Wow, and I've, I've worn this recently during mask time. The person like pulled their mask off and just took a beautiful inhale and I was in a work environment. I'm like, I have to smell you, you smell amazing. So this one is from 2016 and the nose behind this is Jacques Cav Cav Cavalier. Sorry, he seems to do most of their fragrances. The top notes are black currant syrup and watery notes. Middle notes are rose, cyclamen, narcissus, and jasmine sambac. In a base of agarwood oud, patchouli, incense, and benzoin. So there's, I mean, it never gets too heavy because you have those watery notes in there, but you have very rich notes. So it kind of balances it and gives it this fruity air, yet you have that benzoin in there and you have that oud in there. And it just gives this, this, rich, decadent, enticing, like serious compliment getter, where it's like, what are you wearing? Like I got the vote from that entire room of employees are like, yes, buy it. Yeah, this is a good one for all you girls that have similar tastes, but this is definitely like in this realm, if you like these kinds, man, this one is so good. It's that black current in here that is just like, ah, oh, yeah. And it, it definitely projects, there's definitely a sillage and there's definitely um, longevity and you will smell it on yourself, which I love about a fragrance when I, I get that projection that I can truly smell it in my little bubble versus having to smell my hand. Like Delina, I have to smell my hand. So it's, uh, gosh, I think I might have to wear that today. I'm loving that one. All right, the next one is fairly new as well. And that is by Raja de Pierre de Valet number one. I did this in the hall as well. And I did have samples of this also. This was not flying by. Uh, this is from 2017. I can't believe all this time I didn't know about it. The top note is bergamot. Middle notes are May Rose, Jasmine, and Orange Blossom in a base of saffron, oud, ambergris, benzoin, cypriol oil, also known as Niger Matha, patchouli, vanilla, leather, labdanum, sandalwood, cedar, and musk. I went over it a little bit in my haul video. This is another one that is just divine. It works really well on men also. Like this is truly unisex. There is enough sweetness in here that girls really enjoy. It doesn't go too dark. You know I'm funny with my ooze. I don't like them to fall into abyss. Like Zerjoff opera is beautiful. But just like the opera with your soprano and your alto and tenor, basically it like starts out vibrant and fruity and then the middle gets more serious and then falls into this deep abyss of dark, bitter oud. And it just, it's too dark and dry for me that it's like depressing to me. I, it's not good. I need some kind, something to vibe, like cheer it up a little bit. I need some kind of sweetness or fruit or something with my ooze. So there's this balance. And this one does that. The leather is not a heavy leather. It's more like in the background, you get this leather smell and you're like, ooh, there's a little bit of leather. It's not this prominent in your face. Um, Tiziana Terenzi, Spirito Fiore, Spirito. I don't, Fiorentino, Spirito Fiorentino. I don't like that one. There's too much leather in there for me, like just to put it into perspective. 
That is way too masculine and leather for me. It's just in your face leather. This is not in your face. It's just kind of in the background, kind of like, toodles, how are you, you know? So it's, this is a good one. Two more. Okay, we have two from Frederick's Dubois. How can I do oud and not mention Frederick's Dubois? So I have Oud Rose Intense, which is from 2013. It is by Hamid Marathi Kashani. Top notes are fruity notes and bergamot. Middle notes are rose, sandalwood, geranium, and amber in a base of oud. This is, again, a drier one, but you do have that rose in here. So if you notice, there's no vanilla, right? There's some fruity notes in the top, but it's not like there's vanilla in here. So it is drier, but you get that rose that sweetens it up. And again, these are a great longevity, great sillage, great quality, cleaner ouds. I like a cleaner oud. And Fragrance Dubois, New York, Fifth Avenue. I love this one. This one is from 2020. It's fairly new. It's Shadi Samra. Top notes are rose and bergamot. Middle notes are caramel, violet. So you get that sweet caramel. You get the violet powderiness. Cypriol oil, which is nagamata. Base notes are cashmere wood, musk, goyak wood, and vanilla. Like, And we're back to those sweet food roses that I like. I haven't worn you in a while. I think I need to take you for a ride. Oh, goodness. This is another good one. If you, if you haven't tried this one. Super longevity, super sillage, super great quality. Um, I, I don't know, like, oh, I can't say enough good things about this one. I have a whole video on these, so I'm probably not going to go too much into these because... I have a whole video dedicated to Fragrance Dubois and I don't want this to get too long. So those are my current favorite Rose Oud fragrances. And there are so many out there. It's a popular combination. Um, maybe I give you some ideas because you know my taste. They're all similar wheelhouse-ish, but like, I mean, you look at these Fragrance Dubois, I mean, Galena, Oud Bouquet, very different, but yet, there is something in common there with a little bit of depth, rose, and sweetness because I like that. So let me know what your favorites are because there's so many out there. There's so many great ones. And I will see you in the next one. Mwah. Bye, you guys.